Alright, what's up guys? Shuckle King here bringing you my IPL Miners uh, power rankings uh, post-draft. So, a little bit of a different video than I normally post, but uh, if you guys didn't know, I was in a league called IPL, hosted by uh, Automatic, uh, maybe about six months to a year ago, I would say I was in it. Uh, for two seasons, I won my first season and didn't make playoffs the, uh, the second season. Uh, I just had too many leagues to uh, commit further to this, but it's a really nice group of people that they got around here. And um, they also have a, a minor system that was implemented. I believe my second season there was the first season of minors, so this is either season two or... I believe this is season two. I don't think this is season three. I think it's season two of minors. Um, and we got some pretty, pretty interesting drafts, some very good drafts, some stuff I like to see here. This is also all based on this um, draftleague.nl doc that uh, automatic setup and it's super super nice um he has it for i can pull up some of the other leagues that are that he's hosting on this website i know i gave this suggestion to him a while ago that he should open it up so it's cool to see all these different leagues some pretty well known ones that utilize this document it's really nice but anyway now why we're here we're here to list the uh, power rankings for miners um and to start it off who's it gonna be we got this team here. The Winchester Willow Wisps, coached by uh, Pitmore. Uh, I, I, I ranked all these teams a couple days ago and came back on this, so maybe I'll change my opinions, but I'm pretty sure they're set in stone at this point. Uh, his team right here, we got Infernape at tier 180. This is also another cool thing. They ran tiers before, which are fine, but now they do uh, like the what I call the hive style tier system where you still have to draft something from tier 1, 2, uh, 2 from tier 3, tier 4, tier 5, and a mega, but uh, they're broken down in a little bit more uh, balanced point systems. Um, so Mimikyu looks like it's probably like a like a two, like a a 2 tier 2A mon, versus Shaman is like a tier 2B mon. So again, not 100% sure on that, maybe I should have looked it up. Actually, I think, yeah, that's what it is, tier A. 2A and 2B, so I do like the format of that a little bit more um, because there can be a little bit of imbalances between tiers if it's all in the five. It's like 10 tiers as opposed to 20, or as opposed to five tiers, and like point drafts are like 20 tiers essentially. So it's a good balance of trying to get lower tier and higher tier mods. And hopefully, we get some people to get some lower tier mods, which I don't really like most of these, but I'll get for this team anyway. But uh, he's got Infernate, Mimikyu, Stormy. Shaman, Donfin, um, Offensive Z and Pol uh, Stormy, and Z Offensive and Polion. We got Jolteon, Avalug, Kamala, oh, why is my mouth not working? Muck, and uh, his Mega was uh, Mega Aerodactyl. And there's also point value for Mega, so there's negative 20, 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, or it could have been 40, 60, 80. I don't know if there was a 20 point tier. So if you picked a Plus 40 point mega, you got more points towards your other mods. Makes sense. Um, so, this, I don't know, my mouse isn't working. So, this team, what I like about it, it has a lot of pretty cool speed here. So, Mega Arrow sits at 150, Jolteon sits at 130, Stormy's at 115, then you got Infernape at 108, Mimikyu at 96, Shaman at 100, even if Walls have a little bit of speed variety with a Donphan at 50 and Polion at 60. Um, here, let me lessen my screen a little bit. Can I get this all in the one? Yeah, that's pretty clutch there. Oh, and down here it also tells, as, a, as another shout out to the doc, the hazard control clerics priority. It's, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, uh, anyway, with this team, uh, the speed tiers are pretty cool. A lot of variety there. Uh, there's also pretty decent offensive mons. Like Mimikyu is pretty cool for tier two. Uh, Infernape's pretty cool, Stormy's pretty cool, Jolteon's pretty cool, but, and he has a uh, good priority options, as uh, we showed below here, he has, for priority, he has Empoleon, Aqua Jet, Infernape, uh, Mock Punch, there it is, Donphan, Ice Shard, uh, Mimikyu, Shadow Sneak, Mock Shadow Sneak, Infernape, Vacuum Wave, so he has a lot of good priority options there, which are Maybe sometimes overlooked having a priority option one because it always gives your opponent a plus two speed or a speed you're not going to be able to add speed. If you have that priority without having lock in the choice scarf is also pretty nice to get some pickoffs. But 
The problem I have with this team and why it's ranked 8th is that I'm not, like, if I were prepping the faces team, I wouldn't really be scared. Um, it's not like that he has inherently bad mons on his team, but I feel like you could get more value based on where they were sitting in in the tier than what he got. Like, Infernate for 180 points for tier 1 A, or I guess that's tier 1 B. There, there's like a 200 point tier as well, so I guess maybe that's like an S rank tier and this is like tier 1. But Infernate for 180 is a little bit expensive, especially if you're not going to give it Z move access. Uh, and Infernape, I think, benefits a lot more with the Z-Move Axis and Stormy does. Stormy can just run Analytic Life Orb, does a lot of damage. Um, and I'm sure with the Empoleon and Muck, it was just balancing out the rest of the points, so he probably couldn't get both if he had Infernape. He probably could have gotten one. Um, but I don't like an Infernape. is 180 points and doesn't have access to Z-Moves. Not that I think Infernape really... Like, it doesn't need them but if you're going to spend 180 points for infernape i think you want to give it z move access um so i thought that was kind of weird um his setup speed wise isn't there like he doesn't have a dragon inch or really an agility sweeper and that's something i generally try to value in drafts i don't value really a ton a ton of things honestly besides uh getting stealth rocks i feel like you can have a great draft any way else like you don't have to have certain types or certain speed tiers or whatever as long as you get at least a rocker i think that's really the only requirement you need but uh speed setup sweeper would be pretty nice for this team um his knockoff resists is also pretty bad like i guess avalog but you're not going to bring avalog more into a game or two um and then otherwise mimic can take it obviously but then you'll break the disguise um so He's going to get worn down pretty quickly. I guess Mayor Ar Aerodactyl can somewhat take knockoffs, but it's not the most bulky mod out there. Um, and speaking of defensive cores, that can take off, no that could take knockoffs. I feel like they don't take many moves in general. Like, his defensive core is Shaman, Don Fan, and Polion, I guess. I guess Avalog is there to an extent. Kamalus is there to an extent, but it's bad. Muck doesn't really want to come to any games, really. Merida Aerodactyl can be bulky as how fast it is, but even then it's kind of limited. So, Shaman's fine. Um, Domfan's pretty not spadef bulk, bulky, which can be an issue. And Polion is, is fine, but I don't know. Like, they don't... None of them have reliable recovery either. You have to rely on, like, Wish, Jolteon. Well, Shaman does, but Domfan and Polion don't. And if really Shaman is your only pivot that can take hits and, like, heal it back... And that's kind of an issue to this team, especially because you don't have any... I mean, you have Kamala Wish support, but its HP is so low, and it's really not that good. Like, its bulk is 65-65 on the defensive side, and even 65-95 bulk on the special defensive side. It's just as good as Jolteon. So, I mean, it's not saying a ton for it either. So, it's kind of a tough position there. And, and Jolteon does get Wish too, but you're not going to use that in that role. So... I feel like just getting better Mon for the tiers than what he got would have made this team better. Like, his Mons weren't bad, but there's some pretty, like, there's only so much of a high, like, like level of success that this team can have based on the Mons that he has. Um, he also has a ton of Rapid Spinners, which is cool. Uh, not really needed. His 40-point Mons I don't like at all. Muck, Kamala, or Avalog. I feel like you could get a lot better things than that. But at least he got a grounded poison with Muck, I guess. Sure. Um, so this is teammate Pitmore. Don't know him well, but good luck. Uh, we're up to number seven on the team. And that'll be the uninspired Ampoms. So he has a, he has some pretty cool mods. He has Garchomp with Z access for everything. He has Garmory, Conkelder, Snorlax, Muck. Tornado's Eye, Lycanroc, Clefairy, Electivire, Musharna, and uh, Mega Alakazam. Now his username, this, uh, this is this is one flaw before I get into what I like, is uh, his name is deleted user AF343GV, and I don't know what type of username is that. Uh, I don't really like it, it's just bad. So what I do have a suggestion here is uh, we're gonna give you a nickname so I'm going to randomly generate a Pokemon 
And whatever's in this first slot is what your name will be. So we got Cedra. That's a pretty cool mine there. Uh, and then we're going to go into this random adjective generator and go through a couple and see if there's anything that's good. The rare Cedra. I like that. So we got rare Cedra. And we're going to put a number at the end of your name. Uh, between 830 and 999. And you're 506. So, Rare Cedra 506 is now your name. So, um, for Rare Cedra, um, what I do like about this team is the Trick Room potential. It's really cool, and, like, not a lot of people really use that. Like, I guess, uh, went to Wolfie used it for, what was it, GBA, I think, for a season. But he has really good potential there. He has Mushorna. Um, I think Baton Pass is banned still from this league, so there's a little bit of, uh, Mishara isn't as good without a baton pass, but still definitely decent in a uh, trick room roll. And it's offensive enough that it can use a, like a life orb set and set up trick room plus uh, abuse it itself. Though it does take life orb damage on like a trick room re reuniclus, but it's also only 40 points, which is pretty good. Um, what else did he have? He has Clefairy that can also set up trick room. So there are two pretty reliably bulky mons that can use it. He has Snorlax. Which, if you're banded in 110, it hits really hard. If you're cursed, you can set up and like boost your speed under Trick Room. He has Alolan Muck, which is decently strong and can also set up curses in Trick Room. And he has Conkelder, which there's really hardly any switch-ins in the Conkelder, especially under Trick Room. I mean, I showed the potential Conkelder with Speed Pass, and this is like the complete opposite. And then the Spectrum, Conkelder with not a lot of speed and abusing that very low speed stat. Um, so that's cool in that regard. I do like his option of putting his Z op, uh, status and offensive on Garchomp. Um, I'm guessing he didn't have many points left over to make the difference between uh, offensive and offensive plus Z status. But at least it gives him the uh, option to run Z Sandstorm and boost your speed plus one. So it gives you a, a sweeping opportunity there. Um, his defensive core is pretty nice. He has Skarmory. That could take physical hits really well. He has Snorlax to take special defensive hits. Same with Muk. Mishorna can be balanced depending which way you want to go. Clefairy is, I mean, it's bulkier than Clefable. Has to hold Evil Light, obviously, but it's probably pretty decent. He has a lot of more spadef focused mons, um, but Skarmory is like the best physical defensive mon, so he kind of balances it out there. Um, and he has pretty cool late game sweepers with Snorlax and Muck. If they can get um, curses up, it's going to be pretty hard to take them down, especially with uh, getting Figgy Bear or whatever barrier they would activate. Um, but some problems on this team is that um, Skarmory is going to be forced to run Defog a lot just because his team consists of Skarmory and Tornado's Eye to, uh, as hazard removal. So uh, it's going to be hard for Skarmory to use Spikes plus Defog. It kind of counteracts, and you can get around it, like Defog first, and then get up Spikes, but because Garmory is really the only viable Defogger, it's going to be tough to abuse the Spikes. And, like, Garchomp and Alakazam are really the only two that really benefit from Spikes. Um, so it, it, it's kind of weird there. It would be nice to get a, like, you have Mega Alakazam, which is a gray Mega. I like it at, at the uh, zero point mark. Um, I think it's pretty underrated, especially because of how fast it is and how strong it is. Um, it would be nice to get more momentum mons in general to, like, trap stuff with Alolan Muck. Because Alolan Muck plus Mega Alakazam, I like that combo. But he really he has Tornado Eye with U-Turn, which he might not run U-Turn all the time just because of the uh, special attacking options that Tornado has. And then Lactivire isn't the greatest. It's fine at 40 points, but you're probably not going to be running that a ton. So it's going to be hard to get momentum into Muck to trap things that can handle Mega Alakazam. Like fast, like Scarfed uh, Ghost types or Scarfed Bug types or something along to that. So Muck's a little bit worried there. He has no water resist, so that's pretty bad. Um, and if there's like a water mon plus they have Toxic, I don't really see how his team beats it. Unless if Snorlax like a, a rest set. It's going to be pretty tough to get around that. Um, I don't know if you need Z status on Garchomp. But again, I don't think any other way you distribute your Z points would have made a difference. Um, 
The speed tiers are a little wild. You have Mega Alakazam at base 150. Your next fastest is Lycanroc and Tornadus, which basically hit the same speed tier. And then you have 102. Um, and then after that, you basically drop off all the way to your very slow uh, sweepers under Trick Room. And then Skarmory is sitting there in the middle at 70. So there's a big drop off after Guard Jump. Um, it's not bad. It would have been nice to get something a little bit faster, maybe than Lycanroc, to like bounce out that speed tier. But at least you do have a couple things that have speed base 110, which is pretty nice. So, um, Rare Seedra. The team is the team is good. It definitely has potential, especially with Trick Room. So I like it, but not as high as some of the other uh, teams on this list, like team number six, which is the uh, New York Neo Legos, and that's coached by. Um, by Chris and I've played him before um, cool guy uh, I remember that he had a couple of these mods the last time I played him in a IPL um, so that's pretty cool so he has a Tornado ST Victini Blissey with Z Offensive Coma with Z Offensive Lola Ninetales Crobat Z Alamomola Serena Magneton Z Granville and Mega Banet the big boy right there that's, that's it's pretty much respect to getting a mega bayonet um and i guess it does give you the option of getting two like a lot more great mods because you're getting 80 points from mega bayonet but um overall he has pretty good bulk with blissey alamomola two of the best wish passers in the tier uh granville's a pretty decent bulky mon for 40 points that can take dragon hits magneton can be a little bit bulky though it's weak to uh to earthquakes obviously um and then he does have a low in nine tails that can give defense boost to everybody so that's pretty cool he also has cool breakers with victini plus tornadus uh both very offensive it would have been nice to see tornadus get z move access i'll talk about that in a bit but he has really cool breakers there under the uh under the veil and uh nine tails plus coma oh it looks like a pretty cool combination because coma struggles getting past dragon types and uh, fairy types and all on nine tails can handle those pretty well so he has some pretty cool options here he's like a very bulky team and a very hyper offensive ish type team so it's gonna be interesting how he mixes the two together um weaknesses are that it's stealth work options are pretty limited it, it's blissey and uh, uh something else como so Como doesn't really want to run Stealth Rocks too often if it's going to be trying to Dragon Hand Sweep or Choice Specs or Autonomize, whatever Como is set you want to run. And Blissey can definitely run it, but if it's Stealth Rocks, it's probably not going to be Wish Protect. So it's not going to be supporting the team as well. Now, you do have Alamomola to Wish Protect, it, so it's not that big of a deal. But if Blissey is your main rocker, then it can definitely be exploited. Um, electric types are kind of an issue to this team. Um, especially because he does have Tornadus plus Crobat, he, uh, his resistor Magneton and Serena. And if Magneton's like Choice Garf, which is probably the best set, or Specs, then it's still going to be taking decent damage from like a Volt Switch. And Serena will take Volt Switch is pretty fine, but not having an immunity would be good, especially because you have a lot of ones that are weak to electric. Um, the setup options are pretty limited with this team. He has a lot of hard-hitting things that hit under Veil, but it would be nice to get a little bit more sweeping potential outside of Como. And um, Crobat and Tornadus kind of seems like a weird combination um, just because they're both fast flying types with defog potential. Crobat's nice because it has recovery automatically, and Tornadus is nice because it recovers upon switching out or, like, switching in technically. Um but they are both also your defoggers so if you run crobat defog and you run tornado's t then you're even weaker to like scarf dice moves or rock moves like a um choice guard tracheon or uh weak elect like to a uh, volt switch especially because you have no immunities on your team people are going to bring choice scarf electrics every week and it's going to be a, a hassle to try to take care of if you bring Crobat for Defog and you bring Tornadus, because you should bring Tornadus on this every week, how good it is, then you're going to have a third of the team that basically does the same same thing, which is kind of weird. Um, and if you bring Tornadus and not Crobat, Tornadus either isn't going to have Defog, which is more than likely the case, and then your team is going to be pretty weak to rocks, 
or that uh, your reverting defog is not that optimal. Now Serena has rapid spin as a removal as well, and that's fine. I I'm not too big of a fan of Serena for 80 points is probably okay, um, but I feel like Serena's better in like a general bulky grass roll. It can rapid spin, but not the most reliable thing. Um, he has Z Como, which is fine. I think Z Tornadus T is better to uh, not miss hurricanes because missing hurricanes sucks. As you'll, uh, if you guys have been watching my other videos, you'll see that. Uh, it would have been nice to get. I don't know, like the same with uh, the uh, the last team in eighth place. Like you have Mega Ban Eight for eighty point. It's not great. I mean, it's fine for like the role in his team. It handles bulky psychics pretty well, but. And it's priority, but it would have been nice to just get like a more threatening team with those 80 points and what this is. Um, yeah, that's, that's like the main complaint there. It was just like a better team. Um, like for 180, 180 points for Victini's kind of meh. Tornadus, it's pretty good value, but without Z move access, it's meh. Blissey for a tier two is pretty expensive, um, as well as Alolan Ninetales. Um, so, not a bad team, Chris, but I don't know, I'm just not too threatened by it either. But it's going to be annoying. It would be certainly very annoying to play, that's for sure. Um, this next team here is the uh, Shanghai Shuckles. Uh, I do like uh, teams with the name Shuckle. And this is, I think I think these teams are, I think that's like 1 to 5. It'd be, I'd be more comfortable bringing in general. And it's kind of surprising that a... Uh, Tapu Koko teams ranked five, just because if you have Coco, you're probably in the top end for the most part. But we got Coco, Cortana, or Coco with all Z move access. Um, Cortana, Gliscor, Chandelor, Z Vaporeon. We got your Galgi, Comfy, Hitmontop, Pharaoh Seed, Slacking, and Mega Metacham. So Coco plus Metacham is a really cool offensive combo there. Um, this is coached by uh, Coach Dies a lot, by the way. Um, What's good about the team? There's a lot of removal. You got um, Comfy, Gliscor, Cartana, Coco, that all defog and rapid spin by a Hitmontop, and it's pretty decent value for 60 point or tier 60 for Hitmontop. So I do like the uh, the uh, ways to remove hazards, even though your team's not super weak to hazards because only Chandelure is um, weak to uh, Stealth Rocks and Spikes. I guess are a little bit of an issue because you don't have many levitating ones, but uh, obviously, with all your hazard removal, it's not really a problem. Mega Metacham and Electric Train is really nice to try to get past like bulky waters with a uh, um, train boosted thunder punches. Um, and bulky waters are hard to bring anyway against this team, so Mega Metacham is even better, just because you have Coco plus Cortana. So, you, bringing a bulky water against Cortana plus Coco plus Terrain Metacham is going to be an issue. So I'm not a big fan of Chandelure, but it actually fits pretty well in this team in regards to uh, not having to worry about bulky waters. Um, I like how Vaporeon fits on this team as a wish support mon and a bulky water in that role. Um, a little bit more specially defensive, which is good because Plus Gore and Hitmontop can handle the uh, physically offensive mons better. Uh, Dragalgy, I like as a dragon on this team, another special defensive mon, a pair of Vaporeon. Um, toxic spike absorber can set up spikes itself and uh, very strong with a 97 special attack but with adaptability you got pretty fair value at tier 80 um, and top of coco is probably the best one in the game so you can't be mad but this team doesn't have the greatest fire or uh, fairy dragon steel combo which is dragalgy plus pharisee plus comfy comfy is pretty cool pharisee is kind of a stretch in tier 40 I don't know how often you're going to really bring it realistically over, say, like, Omastar. I feel like would have more versatility. Unless it was, like, maybe 60 points for Omastar, then it's probably not worth. But, um, so any, like, strong, like, plus one hit from uh, dragon types that aren't its stab is, are still going to probably do a lot of damage to this combo, especially on the physical side. That's a little bit of an issue. Um, no ghost resist besides slacking, which is meh, but... You're not going to really run slacking, especially without Z move access. So it's not the biggest deal to not have a ghost resist, but it'll be annoying. Um, strong flying types are also an issue to this team because there's no flying resist. 
So stuff like Tornadus is going to be an issue. Stuff like Staraptor, I don't think he got drafted, would be an issue. Swallow would be an issue to this team. Um, though Coco had speeds all of him. Um, Mega Metacham struggles with bulky waters to an extent, but also struggles with bulky psychic types. And you have no pursuit mines besides Hitmon on top on the team to really help out with that, or no dark type at all. Dark types aren't the most important thing in the world, but it would be nice to add trap with Mega Metacham. Um, so bulky psychic can be a little bit of an issue. Again, you do have Coco, which hits pretty hard, as well as Cartano on the physical side, so maybe not necessarily, but it can be an issue. Um, ground types are also an issue to the team. Gliscor is um, resistant to them, but everything else hits gets hit pretty hard by normal EQs from Mons. I guess hit on top to an extent can handle it too. So Coco is a little bit threatened by like Scarf ground types if Gliscor is dead. And um, Gliscor is also a pretty cool stealth rocker, and Pharaseed is like fine for tier 40, not the most reliable, but it would be nice to get a third stealth rock user on the team that's or a, a second one that's more reliable that's than Pharaseed. Um, so a pretty cool team, Shuckle, but I expect to know less because you do share the, the Pokemon name that I do. Um, so in the fourth slot, we have Charlotte Sarpedos, coached by Fancy5. I got him from the uh, LD to join this league. It seems like he's been enjoying it. And he has a pretty cool combination of mons here. He has Zapdos, um, Hydreigon, Celebi, Gengar with D-Offensive capabilities, Primarina, Rotom Heat, Miltank, Excavalier with Z, Lake and Rock with Z, Pillow Swine, and Mega Lopunny. Now, what I like, Mega Lopunny, probably the best Mega out there. Um, it's really good, especially with Hydreigon. I like that um, offensive combination there because like Mega Metacham wants bulky Psychic instead. Mega Lopunny does too. And Hydreigon, though, doesn't have Pursuit. It's just super strong. So I'd like and resist Psychic. So I like that combination there. Gengar also in that respect is good because it's going to probably add speed. Maybe not Azelf, but every other Psychic type. And I guess like Alakazam. But Gengar is also going to be threatening those uh, bulky Psychic types um, with Shadow Ball. And especially with um, Z offensive capabilities, it's going to be hitting them pretty hard. Um, Zapdos, really solid in tier 180. Um, could be 160. It's it's like, it, it's decent. Um, Pillow Swine's a steal at 40 points, though. It could definitely be 80, and I would definitely draft it. So getting it for tier 40 is definitely a steal. Uh, in general, I think you got pretty good value from the Mons where you picked them. Like, tier 80 Mill Tank is good. Um, Lycan Rock is okay, but decent for the uh, for the tier that is in for sure. Primary Arena for Tier 3 is cool. Gengar and Celebi for Tier 2 are good. And Hydreigon's really nice. So I like the value that you got out of all your uh, your mods. And that was a complaint I had with some of the lower ranked teams. That they could have gotten better value. But problems with this team are that it's there's a lot of breakers. But there's really no sweeper on this team. Like Mega Low Putty can. If he's a like power up punch. But other than that, Lycan Rock's not going to sweep at Sword Stands. No tank's probably not gonna sweep a curse. Celebi's probably not gonna set up and win with uh, nasty plot or sword stance, especially because he can't baton pass those. So it would be nice to have more reliability of winning the game at the end than just make a low punny out speeding everything and killing everything. Though it definitely can do that. Um, and I guess Scarf Gengar to an extent can also win late game. Um, Rotom Heat plus Aptos is a pretty weird combo. I don't know what Rotom Heat does that Zapdos can't do, especially because Zapdos has Heat Wave access. It's not like Rotom has that, um, like that much stronger of a fire attack is that much justification for having both of them on the team. So I feel like you just picked every single type, which he did, got a type of every mod, but there's really no reason to do that. So I would drop Rotom Heat for something more reliable. Um, his physical attackers are also pretty limited. Like he has Mega Low Pony, which is great and he has excavalier which hits pretty hard but he's also really slow and can be taken advantage of and pillow swine is it's fine but most of the time he's going to go for a rocks and probably not get much of a hit off after that so it's also weird um so this team is definitely good but i do like the potential of some of the other teams more and i would definitely get rid of rotom heat for something a little bit more useful for the team so in the number three slot we have the Northern Weasels, coached by a uh, username Slack. His team is Kieran Black, 
Well, Safawan forges, Cabalion, Swamper, Ten or uh, Forges with Z, Cabalion with Z, Swamper with Z, Tenacro with Z, Zygarde ten percent, Alolan Persian, Z Luxray, Tangelo, and Mega Pidgeot. So his offense is so good. Blacephalon, Cabalion, Kieran Black, Mega Pidgeot, Zygarde ten. They could like all sweep and win the game for you. It's it's insane. <laughs> this offensive pressure that he has with this team. I would hate to prep for this. Um and he has like cool synergies too. Like Cabalion likes uh, psychic types weaken and Blacephalon is there to just kill him with Shadow Ball. Kieran Zygarde won Fairy's Dead and Blacephalon can handle those and Cabalion helps with uh, Iron Head. Bulky grass types can be an issue for Zygarde 10% but Mega Pidgeot is right there as well as Blacephalon. Electric types are an issue for Mega Pidgeot by Kieran Black, Zygarde, Swampert are all sitting there. And like dark types are problematic for Blacephalon. Like the Pursuit Trap, but uh, Cabalion obviously loves taking dark hits. So, it's an offensive pressure here, but the downfall, the Rockers are okay. Um, like Swampert is really, really reliable in that role. Cabalion doesn't really want to run them. If it generally wants to be more offensive, it can run it. It would be nice to get another option on the team. The hazard removal is fine. It's Florges plus Mega Pidgeot plus Tenacruel. Um... Floor just doesn't really want to run. Um, Defog, especially if it wants to run Wish Protect, it would be forced into synthesis. And Wish Support would be pretty cool for this team, especially because a lot of Mons don't have reliable recovery. Um, and Pidgeot doesn't really want to run Defog either, unless if it has to. It wants to run Hurricane, U Turn, Roost, and the fourth move can be Defog, could be Heat Wave, could be a couple options. So. Really, Tentacruel is the most reliable has removal, and then getting blocked by Ghost can be an issue. And he has all in person to uh, handle Ghost to an extent, but Persian's not that strong of a Pursuit Trapper. Um, bulky Psychics are pretty annoying to this team. Again, a all in person takes them on because it's a dark type, but it doesn't hit hard at all. And, like, Reuniclus can, like, calm line on this unless he runs Taunt for really no issues. And Signal Beam's going to do a lot to all in Persian. So bulky psychics are an issue. Fast flying types are an issue as well. So he doesn't have a uh, flying resist on the team. So like bandage Duraptor get to kill every game. Or scarf Duraptor probably to a KO's his entire team except maybe Swampert. And I guess Luxray, but Luxray is probably not going to come too often. Um, fairy types that are offensive are also pretty annoying. Like Mega Gardevoir basically get to kill. So... He has enough offense to, like, kind of combat that, but, like, strong Scarf mods can be pretty problematic because his defensive mods are fine for the team, but a lot of them don't have reliable recovery either, like Tenacruel or Swampert or Lolan Persian. And Tangela has Re Regenerator, which is nice. Forget has Wish Protect, which is unreliable, or Synthesis, which is good. Um, the pivots on his team are okay, not great like if you want to take a strong hit and then switch out your options are going into Florges and clicking synthesis which is fine but then you're not wish protect and the team would like wish protect support your tangela which doesn't want to take any special hits whatsoever or you're like swamper who's gonna get wore down pretty quickly especially if it likes to run window berry a lot and again um i like the cool offensive mons though again with uh zygarde plus kieran black um but I'm not sure if Kieran Black is really worth tier 200 points w without Z move access. Um, like, I don't disagree with giving it to Z Cabalion, which is super nice in that role. Z Zygar 10 is also pretty cool, but I think I would have given Z access to Kieran Black if you're going to spend 200 points on it. Um, also, bulky waters can be a little bit of a problem this team. Again, Tangela takes them on well, but if they're a bulky water at Ice Beam, then it's an issue. But. It's not, and there's enough offense where it's probably not that big of a threat. So, I like this team a lot, Slack Off, um, but I like two teams more. Uh, but I would definitely draft this type of team that you have here. I do like it a lot. Yeah. Number two team is going to go to the New Orleans Nightshade. So, Florida Flygons are going to get the number one slot. But for this number two team, we got coached by uh, Robert. You got Zygarde with Z offense, Tapifini, Darmanitan, Galvantula. Metagross, Umbreon, Aerodactyl, 
Cofagrius, Golbat, Rhydon, and Mega Venusaur. This team is just really solid. Um, Z Zygarde plus Z Arrow is a really big steal. I think this is definitely the best Z offensive combination in the draft. 40 points for Z Arrow is ridiculously cheap just because of how strong uh, Z Sky Attack is or Z Stone Edge and how fast that Mega Aerodact or regular Aerodactyl is is cool. And Z Zygarde is great for uh, Dragonium Z, um, which can be a little bit of a. Uh, it's a weakness I'll talk about later with Finny, but Dragonium Z Zygarde is super cool. Um, he's got Venus, Venusaur plus Finny plus Zygarde. That's just a really good top tier combination of monster, and they all complement each other pretty well. Again, minus like the Misty Train for Zygarde's Outrage, but most of the time Zygarde wants to hit um, Thousand Arrows anyway. Um, Finny doesn't have re recovery, but. It's bulky, really bulky, and doesn't take status, which kind of somewhat negates that, uh, the lack of recovery. Um, he has good enough momentum with this team with Darmanitan plus Galvantula plus Golbat. He can get in his uh, Zygarde pretty reliably and click moves and kill, or get his defensive mons in, or even like Metagross appreciates U turn support because it's also very strong at base 135 attack. Um, he has good rockers that have a lot of flexibility in Aerodactyl, Metagross, and Rhydon. They're all pretty easy brings to get to bring to a game, and they couldn't all run Stealth Rocks in different roles. Aerodactyl can be like a offensive lead with Taunt, or just a fast lead with Taunt. Metagross can be any berry to take any hit plus rocks, and Rhydon's just super reliable with uh, Eviolite to take physical hits. Um, and I really don't see any defensive holes. Umbreon really patches up the team with a wish support and uh, immune to psychic hits, which otherwise would be a little bit of an issue to this team. Uh, a little bit of a, the, the downfalls or the, uh, it would be nice to have a better sweeper in compare to complement Zygarde. Like Zygarde sweeps really well, but otherwise like Finny with Calm Mind can somewhat break a little bit, but it's not that great in like a sweeping role. And Cofagrigus can as well. It's not the most reliable, but I would imagine a game or two you can try to bring Trick Room Nasty Plot Cofagrigus. Um, but it would be nice to give a little bit of pressure off of Zygarde to, uh, to like prevent it from having to be forced to sweep. If that makes sense. Like Zygarde likes the option of sweeping or the option of just breaking with Thousand Arrows. And it looks like based on his team, he's probably going to have to try to be in a sweeping role more. Um, not the worst thing, but... Or you just don't run a sweeper roll and you become a little bit bulkier overall, but less offensive, if that makes sense. Um, and again, Zygarde with a Misty Train is a little weird, but I think the combo is going to work fine. Um, the team's a little bit slow with his speed being Aerodactyl at 130, which is great. And then it's Galvantula at 108, which is okay. And then nothing else above base 100. It's not that big of a deal, especially with... Uh, Sticky Woods from Galvantula, so it's Darmanitan and Zygarde are all going to be a lot faster than otherwise they would be. His special breakers are a little bit suspect, which would be like, I guess, just Mega Venusaur and Max Special Attack. Cofagurgus with uh, uh, Life Four, I guess, and Finny with a uh, Calm Mind Boost, but he really doesn't have many special breakers on this team. But I don't think that's big of an issue because his physical breakers are definitely good enough. I like the balance that Robert's teams has, but not as much as my number one team, the Florida Flygons at uh, Zappe. Um, he's been around, I feel like, for a while on the surfer, but I haven't played him before. But he has a super, super scary team, and I don't want to play him for this at all. He has Clefable, um, Z Zaraora, Heatran, Tangrowth, Crocodile, Mantine, Silvali, with, I guess, any typing. Cryagonal, Miss Magius, Pissimian, and Megalodios. Oh, so this is another team. If I said the last team is the best Z-move combination, this is probably right up there too. I do like a Zeraora plus Miss Magius plus Pissimian. Miss Magius for Z-offensive is really great. Uh, 105 special attack. They come off that. Um, Zeraora is really cool because you don't know if it's going to be physical or special attacking with the Z-move options. And Pissimian is nice because it, do, it does have a gunk shot, so you could be Z gunk shot to get rid of fairies and wouldn't expect it otherwise. So I also like the Z combination that he has here. His bulk is super, super complimentary. I like Clefable plus Heatran. 
is like a good OU core right there. Um, and throw a Tangrowth through that as well. Crooked Isle for Intimidate. And taking a electric move, so the team isn't terribly electric weak besides with Mantine. Uh, but again, if you have Crook plus Mantine, that's a good combination there. Crooked Isle handles bulky psychic types. Mantine. Um, probably most teams are going to try to run it like Hidden Power Ground to hit the Zara Aura plus the Heat Ran. They could be HP Ice for Mantine plus Latios, but Mantine doesn't care about Hidden Power Ices. Cares about electric moves. And you have a Crooked Isle plus Tangrowth plus. Dara Aura to take, plus Mega Latios to take electric moves. So Mantine can pretty well shine on this team. I do like the potential of Mantine here as a defogger as well. Um, Zara Aura is a cool Z move user. Mega Latios is here. So, like, that's got to put you in the top health as well with Top of Coco. Like, it's going to be tough to tell if he's going to be Calm Mind and sweep you or Dragon Inns and sweep you. Because he can do either or. So, that's super good there. Uh, it's a probable. It's borderline broken. It might be a broken one. Mega Latios. We'll see how Zappi does with it. Um, Till Valley is also a pretty nice. Mana just patches up holes like for like a, another ghost resist if you don't bring Tangrowth. Or like a, another ice resist or something. So Valley can patch up any weakness with the uh, whatever typing you want it to be. And it also has momentum with a parting shot which is pretty cool. Um. The weakness a little bit with this team that his physical breakers are pretty suspect it would be Zara Aura for a physical role, which is which is definitely good. Crocodile is fine and Pissimian's fine. Pissimian, you're probably not going to bring a lot, though I do like all the value that he got out of um, tier 40. Crag and all Pissimian and Mismages, very good mods there. Um, he has no priority on this team. In my eyes, is, does the doc actually say any bad priority moves? Uh, there's a lot of bad priority moves. Fake out Zara Aura. Faint, Ice Shard, Quick Attacks, Shadow Sneak, Ms. Magius. So he really doesn't have any priority, which can be a little bit of an issue. And um, otherwise, that's, that's pretty much it. The speed tiers are fine. He has Zerar at 140, then Megalatios at 110 that can also Dragon Dance. And he has Kragle on Ms. Magius at 105. So he has a lot of ones at speed base 100s. Um, and then he has Scarf, Crooked Eye, and Scarf Pissimian as uh, Scarf Potential. And he has. Uh, Differing speed tiers with his bulk and tanger the 50 speed, Clefable at 60, Mantine at 70, Heat Ran at 75 or 77. So I do really like this team that Zappe has. I would not like to face it. Um, so that's my uh, draft recap uh, and power rankings there. Uh, hopefully some of these lower tier teams can improve or maybe they just prove me wrong. Or And I hope that these top tier teams don't make me look like an idiot and actually do well. Uh, so should be a fun season. I'll probably stop in at some point later in the season maybe do a midweek or a mid-year power rankings uh but until next time later guys